Hi. So in my previous video on this series of the ex of this exercise of reading CSV files and using them to uh, for whatever design you're you're using, um, in my previous video what I did was I was I taught you how to take a CSV file that was in your system and then parse the text, chop it into chop it into different units of data with the commas and the new lines and store that information as lists of strings or doubles or whatever that information. Okay. However, what I want to show you in this video is like a bit more of a cleaner approach to this, uh, to this, to this idea, which is instead of maintaining different lists with the different unit, with the different columns of data in the CSV, what I want is to create an object that represents each one of these students in the rows of data, and then uh, using a class to represent each one of these students, and then store the units of information inside of that students inside of the inside of that student object. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to use object oriented programming, and I'm going to create a class of the type student, and then I'm going to use to store that information. So I have this new project that I have here, where I am still reading all the CSV files as different as an array of strings. Okay. But then what I'm doing now is that I have created this other file called uh, I have created this other uh oh, I'm messing this up. <laughs> I have created this other file called called a student class here in my project. Okay, and I have created a bunch of properties for this for this student. Remember that the data looks something like this. So I have created that the student needs to have at least three string properties, the first name, the last name and the social security number. And the social security number is a string because it has these hyphen characters. So I'm going to store it as a string because I really don't care about that. Then I'm going to create because I have four, I have five scores, test one, two, three, four, and the final one, I'm going to store them as an array of scores. And then last but not least, I am going to have another property, which is the grade, the final grade that the student had as a string. Okay. And then what I'm going to do now, and I also created this overwrite the two string method, so that when I create a student, and when I print it to the console, I get a nice line with the name, all the scores, and then the final grade of the student. Okay. If you're interested in how I did this, you're welcome to check the, the actual live stream where I recorded this video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where I was. And I'm going to say, I'm going to iterate with a for loop over all the lines, all the strings in my array of data over, over all the lines that I took from the CSV file, starting from the second one, because I want to skip the header. Okay. And then for each one of these lines, I want to create a new student object that has all this data. So something that I could do is I could do like I did before, I could take the row of data split it with commas, then start taking the first element and assigning it to the last name property, the first name property, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But that would be a little tedious, at least to do it in my main program. Okay. And typically, a very good way of approaching a very a, a good design when it comes to computer programs is to encapsulate or to send as much of the functionality that you can into uh, for objects into the actual object. So if we know that in this particular case, for this particular student, we're always going to be creating student objects from a line of string values that is coming from a CSV file, then it's typically considered a better approach instead of doing all the parsing and all the of the data and the chopping in the main program, and then creating the object here, it's actually considered better practice to just do all that processing inside of the actual class that is going to be generated in that object. So typically something that in other forms we would do, which is just taking here, okay, give me the name, give me the last name, give me the last name, etc. as information that is passed to the constructor. Because in this case, we know that we're always going to be starting this object from a line from a string that has all that information, then why not just say, well, I'm going to create objects by just passing the full line with all the data. And then let's, let's 
trust that the student class is going to do a good job at taking all that line, splitting it, chopping it, parsing, and then populating its own data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create each one of these student objects from the full row of data that I am reading from the CSV file. So what I'm going to do here now is that I'm going to say, I want to create a student object called student, and that's going to be a new student that is going to come from CSV lines. So I'm passing the full line, right? The, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, I'm passing the whole thing with its commas, as a string representation, whatever. I'm hoping that the class will take that and will parse the whole data and then uh, give, give me back an object with all that data inside. And then once this is still not implemented, I'm going to do it right now. But let's imagine that this already works. Now that I'm when I'm done with this, what I want is to store in a list, for example, called students, I want to store all these elements. So I want to create a list of student objects. And then I want to add to the students, I, I want to add this new student that I just created. Okay, and let me rename this, I'm just going to call it ST. Okay, for example, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's a little less confusing, perhaps. Okay, and then here in another for loop, I could say int i equals zero, i is less than the amount of students, so students dot count, i plus plus, and then here I want to print to the console each one of these students. So students, uh, square brackets, i. Okay, and technically, that should print each one of the um, each one of the each one of the students. But you can see that this code right now, what is happening is that uh, is that it's printing this string of data, which is coming from the fact that I created this string representation. So I did an overwrite of the two string methods. I have other videos where I explain this, and then I just created this composite. Of, of a string with all the information that is contained inside of this object. Okay, so that I have a nice representation of each one of the students. But right now, I don't have it, because I haven't really, when I create the students, I pass the information to the constructor, but I haven't really done any of the information. So all the data that is present for each one of the student objects is empty data is the data the default data that happens when you create variables, which is for strings, it's just an empty string. And then for doubles, it's just the number zero. Okay. So but at least I have the right amount, I have one student for each one of the lines in my CSV data. So now what I need to do is I need to go back into my student class. And now that I have the main structure of the program, I am taking each one of the lines, I'm creating a student object with that line and I'm printing into the console, then here, what I need to do is I need to make sure that inside of the student, the student class properly takes that line of code, chops it in the commas, and then populates first name, last name, social security with each one of the correct data points. Let me show you how I would do this for a couple of data points. So for example, uh, the first thing that I will need to do is I will need to chop the string like I did in my previous video. So for I'm going to call data and I'm going to say row data, I need to split this by the character, um, the character comma. Okay, and that gives me an array of strings with each one of the data and data points as as part as well as element of the of the column. And then, for example, last name is the first one and first name is the second one. So I can say, now parse data into properties, okay, and say, last name of this object. So this dot last name is going to be equal to data zero, the first element in the array. This dot first name is going to be equal to data dot one, the first element in the array. Okay, the next one is social security number. This let me dock this here to the side. And then let me unpin this. So this dot social security number is data dot two. Okay. Now, we have the five numerical test 
entries, which I have here created as an array. So what I can say is this test scores, the first test score, so the first one on the array has to be data in the in has to be the fourth element in my CSV. So element in position number three, so data dot three. But this is not going to work for the reasons that I explained in the previous video, because this is technically a string when I read it from the CSV file and when it's coming from the string array. So I need to convert this to a double. So convert dot to double. And I've also explained in the previous video how this can give errors, can give me errors if the data is not properly formatted. But it doesn't matter because sometimes it's actually good that you have this error so that you see that your data is faulty and you can decide whether if to change it, delete it, modify it or write other things. So now for each one of the elements, I can say one, two, three, and four should be four, five, six, six, and seven. Okay. And well, we could get away with this. But you know, also, if we wanted to write something a bit cleaner, we could probably use a for loop to do this. But it doesn't matter. We're already there. So okay. And then the grade is going to be equal to um, to the element in position number eight, which is this one here and last. So I believe now we have taken all the data from the row and we have taken each column and we have assigned that to the proper variables that we wanted. Let's see if I run this code now and if I get a proper printout for each one of the students. All right. And you can see that now the input string is not in the correct format. So I'm getting some kind of error. So I can see that one of the um, the one of the um, one of the data points is not correct. So what that's going to be, what is it going to be? It's going to be the second one. So I can see here that yeah, here you see, I had this one character, this back quote. Um, so this was you see, this was a way of detecting that I had an, an error uh, in my data. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to save that file again, I'm going to stop this program, and then run it again. And as I do, now you can see that I have a nice printout for each one of the data points of this um, of this object of this of this CSV file. So what's interesting now is that this code is very clean, is very elegant, and it encapsulates in this class that I have created. It encapsulates the representation of all the data that is part of the CSV file. So now in my main program, I have a list with all these student objects. Okay. And then if I were using these student objects for storing them in a database or managing user accounts or something like this, then this class is a really, really good representation that I can use to exchange student objects between different parts of my program. And it's a very elegant, very clean and very encapsulated way of working with this data. So I really recommend that you try that you always try parsing data instead of independent lists, which can be a little messy as um, as um, as and, and turn it into classes. Okay. All right. So I think that's it for this video. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other data set that I have, which is called uh, which is which is coming from uh, the recording of human motion in three dimensional space with video game controllers. So it's a bunch. It's a bunch of it's a really crazy data set, but it's a bunch of X, Y, Z properties and X of the center of the controller and the orientation of the controller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this data. I'm going to parse it from a CSV file. I'm going to bring it into a 3D modeling environment, Rhino and Grasshopper. And I'm going to write C sharp scripts in Grasshopper so that I can plot this motion as planes in three dimensional space. Um, which will also be useful for another series of videos that I want to do, which is plotting and doing a representation of that motion with three dimensional geometry in the modeling environment. So if you're interested, follow me up on the next video.